So actually the file I want to copy is this one. Oops, I don't want to copy it to the output directory. I want to copy it to the input directory. So again, we watch this directory. In just a few seconds, the file disappears. And now we go back to hat. And we do our run query. And we see the file was received. And it didn't go through yet. So it still says we don't have basically the same error. We don't have a subscriber for this. It says there were no subscribers found. So that means we basically didn't get our filter right when we set this up. So I'm going to back to here and I think it, the problem was the quotes. So if I remember when you do filters in orchestration you have to think C sharp and put quotes. But when you put a filter here, it's not C sharp, so you don't put the quotes. Okay, so we're going to take the quotes off, and we don't have to do anything else except drop the file again now. Wait for the file to get picked up, then we go back to hat. We just uh, refresh by hitting F5 or run query here. And once again, we got the exact same error. So that means still we don't have our filter right over here. So we're going to take another approach here to figure out what the error is. If we go to the BizTalk admin tool, click on the second item at the top here, the BizTalk group, you see this group overview. And one of the reports, by the way, you can, you can hit F5 here. And for some reason, it doesn't refresh when you open it. But when you hit F5, it does refresh it. And you can see here counters. And you can see we have various resumable and not resumable errors already. And so I can click this button. And I get a report of all the errors that we have, or all the suspended messages. And so down here, we can see the three messages I had with the routing error. Let me move all this up a little bit easier here for you to see. And so here, I'm going to right click. And I'm going to do show message. Well, actually, I'm just going to double click it. And now we can zoom in and see more about it. So what we're looking for in here is what is the message type. And you notice right here, the message type is blank. So it didn't know what it was at all. It's kind of strange. The context, sometimes you might see message type in here as well. So since we don't have a message type here, that would imply that we don't that we maybe we have a pass through on the receive port. So let's go back to the receive location. Let's just double check. And yes, we do. Okay. I thought when we set this up I picked XML receive, but I didn't. So pass through is designed when you're sending non-XML data through your system. If you have XML data, BizTalk actually has to read that data and parse it in order to know what the message type is. So by not having XML receive here, it's impossible for BizTalk to actually figure out that it's a BizTalk message and know what its message type is. So now by correcting that, we're going to drop the same file again. The file has been received. Now we go back to hat. You can see our history here is now growing. And now also here you can see we had the pipeline before. This was the bad pipeline. This is now the XML receive pipeline. And if I go over here and look, we see we have a slightly different message now. So let's do a right click message flow so we can read it more easily. It says there was an error executing the receive pipeline. Cannot locate document specification because multiple schemas match the message type. Now, this is a very common error. And this is actually the reason why I wrote this SQL command. So BizTalk doesn't tell you what the duplicate names are here. He just tells you that there's there, you have more than one schema with the exact same uh, specification. And the specification means message type. So if we go back to our SQL command right here, see here's the problem. You have two rows in this database that have the exact same name called purchase order. And that is because I generated it twice using different techniques. Okay, so what we're going to have to do is undeploy 
and redeploy so that we only have one purchase order schema in our database. So we're going to go back to Visual Studio and I need to look at this again to figure out what's what. So right here what project is this? So one's PO schema generated and one was PO schemas. So generated was the one where we ran the utility to pull it in, the uh, XML to XSD utility. Hang on, I'm still trying to remember what this was. So it says the namespace was PO schema generated. Okay, that's the project name. So how many schemas do I have here? I have partner PO schema and I have W3 sample schema. And W3 sample was the one we actually did the generate from. And then the partner schema was the one where we actually copied in their schema and it used these, uh, these complex types. So the point of this whole thing is we can't have two, ele two schemas that have the same root element and that are not further distinguished by a namespace. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete this one right here. And then I'm going to do a redeploy of the solution. And of course that will rebuild. It, it detects that a file has changed. It will force a rebuild of that project. And then it will redeploy everything. So if you're used to BizTalk 2004, you'll find that this deploy mechanism is much easier. Okay, now it says deploy succeeded. I can go back and look over here again. Even what's more important than that is we go run the SQL command now. So I just press F5 and now you can see there's only one schema called purchase order. Yes, we have another one here that has a root element of purchase order, but it has a namespace with it. So when you have a namespace and a root element, it puts the namespace, a pound sign, and then the root element and that makes the message, the message type unique. So now we're going to come drop that data file again. Go back to hat. Rerun our last query. And now you see we have completed. So when you see the word started here, it doesn't always mean it, it crashed, but if, it, if you don't see the word completed, that means it never finished. And so it's either still running or crashed when you see the word started. So when you see the word started, then you come over and look at the error column. You can see there is no error on the last two. So what happened here is these two lines are kind of interrelated. BizTalk received my message at this time, and approximately half a second later, he routed it to the file output directory. So now if I go over here and look in File Out, I see a file, which we'll talk about the name in just a second. And then again, it's the exact same file. So basically what BizTalk did is received it, and then he sent it to all the subscribers. In this case, we only had one subscriber. The name of the file is PO underscore followed by the GUID, which is the message ID. Just to confirm that, you can go back to Hat here and right-click Message Flow again. And up here you should see some IDs for this message. So right here, this the incoming message had one GUID, and then the output message had another GUID. So you can see the message starts with 0440. And if we go back here, there we see the same GUID, 0440, et cetera, et cetera. So that GUID is actually the message ID that came that BizTalk used internally. So now we basically sent one file through using BizTalk. It took us uh, 23 some minutes for this video. I didn't mean to have as many errors as we did, but I always like to teach by showing what happens when you have these errors. So in the next video, we'll actually make other errors on purpose so you can see what else can go wrong with even a simple little deployment like this.